incredible India. And not only are we taking you to the land which has given us some of the best, what should I say, Mishti Doi, Sandesh, has given us Machir Jol, has given us the beautiful saris and music and literature and so much. But very importantly for today's topic, it has also given us people who defended and fought for the freedom of our country from the colonial rule in the times that were before 1947. There are people who created thought. There are people who acted. There are people who gave up their life. And there are people who even till date, therefore, are our real-time heroes. These are those people because of whose sacrifice, because of whose selfless work for their country has actually made it possible for all of us to be today sitting and with great pride being able to say, I am an Indian and I live in a free country. I think so we owe so much to all these people and that's why we thought that it was the right moment one, because on 26th of January, India celebrates the Republic Day also tomorrow in Delhi, we will be, uh, you know, the Honorable Prime Minister, in fact, is going to be inaugurating the installation of the statue of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, about whom I'm sure I don't need to say too much right now because our speakers are going to be talking about all those people. But if any of you does not know about him, then just go and Google, just put the name Netaji, don't even need to go beyond that, just put Netaji, and you will get so much, so much to be read about him. What I also, and I'm sure uh, both my amazing panelists about whom I'm going to tell you, are going to talk about it. But let me not, uh, you know, forget to share with all of you that in the Indian freedom movement from, particularly from Bengal, not only were the men there, but the women. And some incredible women, Bina Dasji, Kamla Das Gupta, Labanya Prabha Ghosh, Kalpana Datta, Suhashini Ganguly, Saroshni Naidu, incidentally, was also born in Bengal. Matangini Hazra, Sucheta Kriplani, who was born Sucheta Majumdar, and so many others. But today, who's going to tell us this story? But that's another very beautiful and unique thing that we have today for you, a father-daughter duo. It's happening for the first time, and so we are very excited, very happy, and very proud of Mr. Manbendra Nagji, who is our registered guide from Bengal, and his beautiful bright daughter, Malini Basu. Welcome, Manbendra Ji. Welcome, Malini, to the Incredible India Dekho Desh series, and thank you for accepting and being a part of our journey. Now, Manbendra Ji told me just before the webinar that he was actually an electrical engineer. And I think the, the intellectual and the more creative Bengali in him must have found that very boring. And that's how he started going to other parts and developing himself into a, a very different role of being a guide. And then he went on to learn French, he went on to learn Spanish, and has uh, been doing this for more than, what, 35 plus years now. So he is a fountain of information, not only on the Indian freedom movement, but on anything and everything that you want to know about that part of the world. So if you are traveling to Bengal, you know who to get in touch with. But what is so unique and beautiful about today's webinar is that he's being joined by his daughter, Malini. Malini, who's done her master's in linguistics and was training to be a professional Kathak dancer. A hard choice, I'm sure you had Malini, whether you should put that as your full-time career or become a guide. For now, she's chosen to be a full-time guide, a full-time mom, who's also now trying to learn German along with her eight-year-old son. So that's the other thing I always say about Incredible India viewers. Incredible India is incredible because of its incredible Indians. And so today, bringing to you the freedom movement from Bengal are two incredible Indians, Manbendra Nagji and Malini Bashu. Malini, the screen is yours to start the session for the day. Thank you. Namaste and welcome all. I am Malini Basu and I convey my heartiest thanks to Government of India Tourism, to Mrs. Brar, Dr. Ajay Singh and all the others for giving us the opportunity in celebrating the spirit of Azadi Ki Amrit Mahotsav. And our topic today is the role of Bengal in Indian freedom movement. So I would invite my dad and our senior guide, Mr. Manovendra Nag, 
to please enlighten us on the subject. Malini, just uh, for a minute before we go, I am going to invite our other very special, uh, you know, co-partner and a uh, journey which we are doing together, Dr. Pankaj. I can see her on screen. So Dr. Pankaj is the Secretary General for the Association of Indian Universities. And we've been collaborating with them in bringing these webinars to, to, to the young minds of India, to the students of universities of India, which is where our present and our future lies. So I'm quickly going to ask Dr. Pankaj to come in for a couple of minutes before we uh, move on to Baba. Okay, thank you, Rabindraji. Thank you very much. And also thanks to Ministry of Tourism for continuing this series on a very, very regular basis. You all know that Association of Indian Universities, which is a uh, association of about 870 universities, uh, we thought that uh, we, I mean, like once I met uh, Mrs. Barar in a program, and we thought that many of our youngsters, like you know that we have 3.7 crore students in our higher education system. So many of our youngsters do not know about the rich cultural heritage of India. Uh, they don't know so many places, I mean, because it is Ministry of Tourism. क्या हमारी स्टोरी है कैसी फ्रीडम मिली किस किस स्टेट का क्या योगदान रहा हमारी फ्रीडम में तो हमें लगा हमारे यंगस्टर्स को ये पता होना चाहिए कि कैसे कैसे इंडिया धीरे-धीरे आगे बढ़ता हुआ आज हम आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव मना रहे हैं 75 साल हमारी आजादी को पूरे हो रहे हैं तो हमने ये सोचा कि हमको दोनों को मिलके इस तरह का प्रोग्राम करना चाहिए जिससे जिसमें कि बच्चों को पता चले कि हमारा ग्रैंड इंडियन नैरेटिव मतलब कैसा भारत हमारा हमें किस लिए खुशी होनी चाहिए गर्व होना चाहिए कि हम भारत में पैदा हुए हम भारतीय हैं और एक ग्रैंड इंडियन नैरेटिव क्रिएट करना चाहिए बच्चों के मन में कि क्यों क्यों भारत अच्छा है क्यों हमको खुशी होनी चाहिए कि हां हम भारत भारतीय हैं इसीलिए हमने ये सीरीज क्रिएट की और इसमें एक ये भी एक अट्रैक्शन डाला कि सीरीज के बाद एक क्विज होगा और उस क्विज के जो विनर्स होंगे उनको बड़े अच्छे-अच्छे प्राइजेस मिलेंगे और जो 10 12 की 12 क्विजेस क्योंकि ये एक साल का प्रोग्राम है तो 12 की 12 क्विजेस जो बच्चा पूरा कर लेगा उसको ग्रैंड प्राइज मिलेगा शुरू के तीन प्राइजेस मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ टूरिज्म स्पोंसर करेगा पिछले जो हमारे शुरू के जो विजेता थे उनको मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ टूरिज्म लेके भी गया एक नॉर्थ ईस्ट के विजिट पे एंड दैट वाज वेरी 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 मच एप्रिशिएटेड बाय द स्टूडेंट्स सो ऑल आवर स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम द यूनिवर्सिटीज दे वेंट फॉर दिस विजिट एंड इट वाज वेरी वेरी गुड विजिट एंड दे वर वेरी एप्रिशिएटिव ऑफ द विजिट सो येट अनदर एपिसोड की बंगाल का क्या रोल है इंडियन फ्रीडम मूवमेंट में हमारे बहुत सारे आपने देखा नेताजी की तस्वीर आपको बिल्कुल सामने दिखाई दे रही है कि बंगाल का क्या रोल था हमारी इंडिया की फ्रीडम मूवमेंट पे उसके ऊपर आज का एपिसोड है तो आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स कि इसको ध्यान से देखिए सुनिए और इस इस जो पूरा एपिसोड है इसके ऊपर ही बेस्ड एक क्विज आपको बाद में मिलेगा करने को और उस क्विज को जवाब करेंगे तो आप ढेरो इनाम पाने के हकदार तो होंगे ही होंगे बट दैट इज अ बाय प्रोडक्ट द मेन रीजन इज दैट यू शुड नो अबाउट द रिच कल्चरल हेरिटेज ऑफ इंडिया अबाउट द फ्रीडम मूवमेंट ऑफ इंडिया सो थैंक यू रविंदर जी थैंक्स टू मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ टूरिज्म फॉर इनिशिएटिंग दिस एंड फॉर डूइंग इट ऑन अ वेरी वेरी रेगुलर बेसिस थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू डॉक्टर पंकज सो मान बेंद्र जी अब आप so i must uh, thank my government of india tourism department to madam bad dr ajay singh and mrs uh, mukushin ashkar and other officials of government of india tourism department and i am very fortunate to speak on this topic the role of bengal in indian freedom movement and this topic is such vast topic so i don't know how to cover all the facts and all the great people who have sacrificed their life for the movement of freedom struggle of india this is a very very vast subject so briefly i'm telling how the britishers came to india that is the beginning then we'll talk about how we have driven out those english people from our country and how thousands of young people from our country have taken part to get rid of those colonial rule. Sometime around in 1583, during the rule of Mughal Empire, Akbar, an English traveler, and he was also a merchant, and his name was Raphael Flitch. He came to India, and he traveled extensively 
all around our country and he made a report to the British government that there is a great possibility of business relation between India and England. And he proposed to form a company so that the England can have a trading relation with India. And that company was named as East India Company because in those days when Columbus tried to find the route to India, so when he reached Caribbean islands, he thought he reached India. So later and he proved to be wrong. So that latter part of the those age, he called the Caribbean islands as West Indies and India was East India. So the consortium of business houses in England with some hundred business houses, they make a consortium to deal with business affairs with India. They call themselves an East India Company. Some of the European business houses have already settlement on the western bank of the river Ganges. And first came Portuguese, then Dutch, Danish, French, and finally the Britishers. And British that came among the last business houses from Europe, but they lived here for long. And with their strong naval power, they housed all the European business houses and East India Company. And they started their business. They first came down to the western part of India in Surat, in Gujarat. And much later, in Gujarat, they came here in the eastern part of India, much later, in 1690, probably on 24th of August, 1690, the chief executive of East India Company, his name was Jok Chanuk. He landed on the northern part of Calcutta. At the time, that part of Calcutta was called Shuta Nuti. The name came from Shuta in Bengali means thread, and Nuti means the small bundle of the thread. It was used to manufacture the weavers in the northern part of Calcutta. So the name of the village was Shuta Nuti. So 24th of August, 1690 is the beginning of growth of East India Company in the eastern part of India. So East India Company, why they were interested? Because they were interested to take spices. Mostly they were interested to take spices to Europe because in Europe there was huge demand of meat in those days, but there was no preservation system, cooling system. It was unknown at that time. They used to import from India the spices to preserve the meat. And later on, they started importing from India through Calcutta and uh, import the cotton because they used to manufacture textile after this uh, industrial revolution in the West. When they started using the steam engine, there was huge capacity to produce cotton products. And so they had a huge demand of cotton. They used to take cotton from India and also they started taking precious stones, gems, gold, and Calcutta gradually flourished as a trading center. And Calcutta port became the busiest port among the Asian countries. It was the busiest port. About 40% of import export from the Asian countries was from Calcutta port. So, till 1692, 1756, the East India Company was simply a trader. But in 1756, a conflict started between our Bengal ruler, Nawab Shiraus Dulla. He was the representative of the Mughals in Delhi and in Bengal. This Nawab Shiraus Dulla was the Nawab. And when I am mentioning Bengal, we must not forget Bengal at the time was not West Bengal. The eastern part of Bengal, presently Bangladesh, then Bihar, Orissa, it was Bengal Presidency. So whenever I will mention Bengal, that means the Bengal Presidency, the present West Bengal, Bangladesh, Asham and Orissa is Bengal. 
So the conflict started between the East India Company because the East India Company, without having permission from the Nawab Shirazullah, they built a fort and they named that fort as Fort William. And sometimes they, they used to give shelter to the criminals from the capital of Bengal at that time, or Murshidabad. From Murshidabad, they, they used to come and take shelter inside the fort. That annoyed the young Nawab of Bengal, Shirazullah. He succeeded his maternal grandfather, Alwardi Khan. At that time, he was a young man of 22 years. He just sat on the throne of Bengal. That annoyed him. And he brought in a huge force with 50,000 soldiers, with high elephants, with cavalry, with cannon, and completely demolished the fort built by East India Company. And there is a story goes, I will refer it as the Black Hole Tragedy of Calcutta. It is said, I am studying it, it is said that there is no definite proof that the Nawab confined some 123 English men and some of them were women in a small black hole inside the fort, the fort William and locked it from outside. And all but one person died in suffocation and thrust. And the governor of Fort William, his name was Hallwell, he made a report that, that Bengal Nava was so cruel they suffocated to death some 123 innocent English people. And much later, Lord Carjan, when he was Governor General of India, he built a tomb and named it as Black Hole Tragedy Tomb. It was erected at the heart of the city of Calcutta. I am referring it because much later in 1940, Nataji Shubhash Chandra Bosch, the greatest freedom fighter India has ever produced, he protested. It is based on a false story that it is impossible to put 123 people in a small room inside the port. How it is possible? So I will mention in details this story when I will talk about Netaji Shuhas Chandra Bosch. Round in and, uh, Bengal gradually became a very important uh, trading center, Calcutta and Bengal was at the time was a very rich state. This part of India was a very rich in all respects. So the British has decided to make many of the educational institutions around Calcutta because it was very expensive to bring the British and writers Naksha, um, decided to train the Indian people. Naksha, your voice break in East India Company. So in Hello? Naksa, you are breaking your voice. Break kar rahe. Aag, ek bari okay. apna internet connection check your internet connection. The East India Company start. It is okay here. It is showing okay. Somehow the voice is breaking. Uh, while okay. You... Now it is better. You can listen now. It's better. It, it, is, it is better now. Okay. But still there is a lot of... So, Garbled okay, and now the many of the educational institutions in Calcutta started. It is not that Britishers wanted to make India as a developed country. Their intention was to produce some clerks and writers. But they started Calcutta University, then Calcutta Medical College, all round in, in Calcutta, then Bengal Engineering College, Bengal Art College, but these give them a boomerang as they produce many intellectuals in Calcutta and round and also in Dhaka, the present capital of Bangladesh. These intellectuals started agitation against the Britishers and 
they started demand we want independence so finally in 1857 there was a revolt started in barakpur that was the first garrison made by the britishers near calcutta it is 16 kilometer north of calcutta the garrison at barakpur one young soldier his name was mangal pandey he was the in the regiment of 34 regiment of bengal native regiment and mangal pandey's leadership that indian soldiers took arms against the britishers and finally it was the india's first war of independence british historian called it a mutiny but indian historian called that war of independence in 1837 headed by a young soldier mangal pandey and that revolt spread in other parts of india in Chansi, in kanpur in lucknow in delhi in Zawa. at the time indian soldiers revolted against britishers and the british india company felt it is uncontrollable by a business house to control the huge country like india and british government decided to take the political right from East India Company to the British government and Calcutta declared as capital of India. So within few years, Calcutta became the most beautiful city in India and second most beautiful city in the whole of British Empire next to London. So in Calcutta, because of proximity of different educational institutions, they produce many intellectuals all the politicians doctors and at the time engineers was not much demand because before industrial revolution in india there were not much demand of engineers but the lawyers writers singers everything in india coming from calcutta and the renaissance they call the renaissance to fight against the prejudice and malpractices all against these intellectuals they fought and the person like Raja Ramahan Roy who was declared crusade against the malpractices on the false false ideas and and she stopped Raja Ramahan Roy stopped the cruel system unbelievable cruel system of Sati where the women if unfortunately she became a widow, she had to go in the fire along with her dead husband. So Raya Ramon Roy is a crusade against the evil system. And he was not against Hinduism, but he was against some useless rituals. One of them was worshipping idols. He made a new religion. It is amalgamation of Christianity and Hinduism. He called that religion as Brahma Shamaj. And it was accepted by the intellectuals in Bengal. The Brahma Shamaj, they brought them in the forefront, the women's education. And so Bengal was the first time in India where women had the equal opportunities with the male. And Bengali women doctors, lawyers, writers, singers started coming because of Raja Ramahan Roy, who initiated the Brahma Shamaj. He was heavily supported by Keshav Chandra Shen, another luminary who supported, and Ravindranath Tagore's grandfather, Prince Darukanath Tagore. He was the most successful businessman of that time who started the shipping business. and he also followed up Raja Ramahan Roy. At the time, Isha Chandra Vidya Shagur, his, his photo you can see in the screen, he was a great social reformer. In those days, the India, the women were not allowed to go to school even. And widow remarriage was forbidden. And Isha Chandra Vidya Shagur, he's an unbelievable, courage, courageous man. He fought against the whole powerful people in the upper class in the society of India to introduce, introduce the, the widow remarriage and girls' education. 
His mission was to start God's school. And he was the founder of Sanskrit College in Calcutta to revive the Sanskrit, the old language. So from Renaissance, of, that's called the Renaissance of Bengal, that bring to light. So to talk about, there are many luminaries. Now I will request Malini, you just speak about something, another great personality from Bengal, Rishi Aurobindo Ghosh. Over to Malini. Thank you. Before I talk about Sri Aurobindo Ghosh, I would just uh, want to mention about Sri Gurupal Krishna Gokhale. When Bengal was rising in every field, he said that what Bengal thinks today, India thinks tomorrow. Because every aspect, every development started from Bengal. Sri Aurobindo Ghosh was a very brilliant and talented man, perhaps ever born in the field of philosophy in India. His father had sent him to England at a very tender age so that he was educated in Western culture. But Sri Aurobindo acquired the best of both India and West. He took part in national movement and became a leading figure there. He used to write fearless analytical articles for the English newspaper, Vande Mataram. In his publications, Sri Aurobindo tried to convey the message of Swaraj or freedom from the British rule. He took part when Bengal was about to be partitioned in 1905. He led lots of protests against the partition movement. Sri Aurobindo was charged in the Alipur bomb case and was sentenced to jail. He spent one solitary year in solitary confinement in the central jail in Calcutta. While in jail, he practiced pranayam and studied Indian philosophy, as well as religion in great details. He decided to give up active politics after his stint in jail and devoted himself to spiritualism. Apart from Life Divine, which is his best known work, he had also written several other books, one of which was Tales of Prison Life. He first went to Chandanagar, the French colony in Bengal, and then later he went to Pondicherry and he set up an ashram there. The partition of Bengal by Lord Curzon in 1905 led to a general outburst of revolt, which favored the rise of extremist party and the great nationalist movement. The British tried several severe repressive measures to control the agitations, but the element of violent revolutionary action grew in Bengal as a result of these strong repressive measures. Bengal was at its peak of nationalist movement at the dawn of 19th century, which eventually emerged as a formidable threat to the British Raj. To curb this nationalist movement, the British decided to divide Bengal, a move vehemently opposed by various leaders of the time, including Ravindranath Tagore, the national poet of India, and one of his songs, Jana Gana Mana, was later adopted as the national anthem of India. The plan was to divide the Hindu majority region of West Bengal, Bihar, and Orissa from Muslim dominated areas of Assam and Silet. The British government passed the order of partition in August 1905, which came into effect in October 16th of the same year. However, the date fell on the month of Sravan, when the festival of Raksha Bandhan was celebrated by the Hindu community. Tagore deftly used the concept of brotherhood, togetherness, and the thread of protection as a medium of protest against the British partition policy by showing a picture of unity among the two communities. 
Following Tagore's call, hundreds of Hindus and Muslims in Kolkata, Dhaka, and Silet came out in large number to tie Rakhi threads as a symbol of unity. Another English gentleman, Douglas Kingsford, he thought there was a life threat on him. Barindra Ghosh was initiated with the revolutionary oath by his elder brother, Sri Aurobindo Ghosh, in 1902. He spent some time in Bengal for recruitment and organization of the revolutionary movement. He chose 18-year-old Khudiram Bosch and 19-year-old Profullo Chaki for a very difficult mission. The British government, being aware of the life threat to to Muzaffarpur, a very remote area in Bihar for protection of his life. Khudiram and Profullo Chaki reached Muzaffarpur and kept very close watch on the daily routine of Kingsford. What time he left his house, what time he went to the club, when he came back and so forth. On the evening of 30th of April, they positioned themselves beside a tree across Kingsford's house and waited for him to return from his club as usual in a carriage. At about 8.30 in the evening, the carriage appeared. Khudiram wasted no time. He ran up and hurdled the bomb into the carriage. There was a loud burst and the young boys fled the scene thinking that the mission was accomplished. But they were unaware that the occupants of the bombed carriage were in fact two English women. Kingsford had been in a similar carriage just behind them and was thus saved. The police commissioner called an emergency meeting in the aftermath of the bombing and carried out simultaneous raids in Calcutta at several locations and arrested around 20 suspects, including Sri Aurobindo, who was believed to be their leader. Khudiram and Profullo went their own way to escape capture. Khudiram had walked 25 miles and he reached a station called Waini. He wanted to have some water after walking such a long distance. So he stopped at a tea stall to ask for some water. Two police constables noticed the young man with dirty feet. So they came around and caught him. Khudiram being a small, thin little boy could not escape from their clutches. They searched the young boy and found two revolvers, 37 rounds of ammunition, some money, and a railway map on him. Khudiram was immediately handcuffed and arrested, and then he was produced in front of the magistrate. He took full responsibility of the assassination. He did not want to blame anybody except himself because he was unaware that Profullo had already died by that time. Profullo Chaki had shot himself to death in order to escape the police. Profullo's body was brought and was told to Khudiram to identify the body. Khudiram did identify the body, but the police was not satisfied. So they cut off the head of Profullo Chaki and sent it to Kolkata to be identified. Khudiram was sentenced to death. He was hanged when he was only 18 years old, but he went to the gallows with a smile on his face and a very erect backbone because he died with the dream of a free India. I would now request Mr. Nag, my dad, to continue talking about another greatest revolution from Bengal, Shubhash Chandra Bose. Yes, I must speak about Nitai Shubhash Chandra Bose, the greatest freedom fighter ever born in India. Yes, ma'am. I think if uh, Baba removes the earphone, the voice might be better because no voice is absolutely clear. But when he's speaking, we are getting a little uh, garbled voice. Does not remove the earphone? I think it will help. Okay. So, I must speak about Vitaji Shubhash Chandra Bose. Madam, it is better now? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, Vitaji Shubhash Chandra Bose 
is the greatest freedom fighter ever born in our country, whom Mahatma Gandhi called the patriot of the patriot, whom Rabindranath Tagore called Deshonayak, means the leader of the country. And his soldiers in Azad in Port INA called him Netaji. So Subhash Chandra Bosch, it is well known as Netaji Subhash Chandra Bosch. His life was an unbelievable courageous man. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bosch, born in Katak. And he had his schooling in Katak, and his father was a leading advocate, lawyer, both in Kotak High Court and Calcutta High Court. And his father was an ardent follower of, of Britishers. So Netaji Shwachana Bosch had his schooling in an English medium, a prestigious school in Kotak. And he was a brilliant student from the very beginning of his career. And he stood second in his matriculation examination at the time whole of Bengal, that means West Bengal, Bangladesh, Bihar, Odisha, the whole of eastern part of India was under Calcutta University. And he stood second there. Then he came to Calcutta and he admitted to a college, a very prestigious college at the time, and the first English medium school in India at the time. It was called Hindu school, Hindu college. This is the picture you see, the Hindu college. And later on, it was called Presidency College and many luminaries, both in the field of politics, literature, science, they have studied. The person like Sir Jagadish Chandra Bosch, Sir Prakulla Chandra Roy, a great chemist, the founder of Bengal Chemicals, and Ashutosh Mukherjee, Shama Prashad Mukherjee, even Shami Vivekanan, they have all studied this college. It is a very famous and prestigious college. And Netaji was admitted. But during his college era, he was involved in politics. So I will mention one incident to you, give you an idea how courageous man he was. Once, when he was a student in undergraduate level, one English professor, Professor Rotel, and he was criticizing in front of the students about the Indian women that they are prejudiced, they have no education, they don't know what is happening around the world, they are ignorant, like this. Very insulting words they are using against the Indian women. And Netaji, a young man of 22 years, first he protested, sir, without knowing the great sacrifice by our mother, by our sister, don't criticize what you know, and then you can tell something. But the Englishman continued his criticizing of the Indian women because he thought, because he is an Englishman, he has the right to speak anything against Indian. And Netaji, the spirited young man, could not resist himself. He jumped on the dash and gave a mighty blow at the face of the English professor. And Netaji was last and He was driven out of the college and he was not allowed to continue his studies in any college under Calcutta University. At that time, the Vice Chancellor of Calcutta University was Sir Ashutosh Mukherjee, a great nationalist leader too. He got the news that a brilliant boy had been driven out of the college and he arranged to continue his education in another college that was not under the Britishers, that was under Scottish missionaries. And Netaji, most of the time he was involved in student leadership politics. Hardly any get time to study, but still he was such a brilliant boy. He stood first in his B exam. Then his father wanted to send him to England to qualify for Indian civil service. At the time it was a lucrative job. Janaki Nath Bosch, his father. But Netaji was not willing. His dream was different. So he got the advice of his elder brother. So he went to England. But in his very first attempt, he was qualified at ICS, 
Indian civil service. That was a lucrative job under Britishers. Then he decided to come back to India, but refused to accept any job under Britishers. Immediately, he joined Indian National Congress under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. Because of his brilliant ideas and his mature political ideas and his wonderful power to deliver the lecture, anything and everything, it was to see India's freedom. So Mahatma Gandhi elected him as the youngest president of Indian National Congress. But very soon he had difference in opinion with Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi's policy of non-cooperation and without using firearms, India will achieve independence. But Netaji said, no, unless we fight against Britishers, he will take another 100 years to achieve our independence. He left his presidentship in 1939 at Haripura Congress, and he joined with his mentor, Chitranjan Dash, a great lawyer, at the same time a nationalist leader, Chitranjan Dash. He had also was a follower of Mahatma Gandhi. But by that time, there was an incident in Chirichora in Madhya district in Bihar, where the, the protest, the Indian people protest against the atrocities of British police, and they ransacked and burned the total police station and killed more than 40 policemen in the police station. That annoyed Mahatma Gandhi. In spite of my instruction not to take arms, and not to be involved in any violence, why you have gone for violence against the Britishers? So he declared, I am withdrawing the non-cooperation movement against Britishers. And Chitra Nindash in Bengal, and Mutilal Nehru, you permit me, and they decided to quit the Indian National Congress and they formed Saraj Party. And Netaji joined on the leadership of Chitranjan Dash in Saraj Party. And Saraj Party had a landslide victory in Municipal Corporation in Calcutta. And Netaji was elected the chief executive officer of Calcutta Corporation. But very soon, Britishers made some false allegation against British that he is the conspirator against the British government. So he was sent to Mandala jail in Burma. At that time, it was also a British colony. And he was confined to jail along with Chitranjan Dash in Mandala jail for three years. And Draghi said, that is the best part of my life. I got three years time to study and to write books. And in the jail, he wrote the book, his majesty opponent about the British atrocities that they have no right to make India as a colony and take away the resources from India and make India as a poor country and to make their country even as a rich country. They have no right. They must quit India. He wrote the book, uh, his majesty opponent. And he had written several books. And finally, Netaji was house arrested after returning, and he was not allowed to leave his house in Calcutta House. And one day, it was in 1941, Netaji pretended to be sick, and he had the idea to quit India, to leave India, and to fight against the British from outside India. So it was in 1940, sometime in 16th or 17th of January, some eight Afghan came to visit Netaji Shwar Chandra Bosch, and Netaji disguised himself as an Afghan and with a false beer with Jobba and the Tarwan. Along with the eight Afghan, he left Calcutta. His nephew, Dr. Shishi Bosch, was waiting outside the car. That car you can see it is still there in front of Netaji's house, which is now converted into a museum. And now it is called Netaji Research Bureau. And along with the car driven by his nephew Shishi Bosch, in the first lap of his journey towards Berlin, Netaji left Calcutta and by Grand Trang Road, he went to Bihar, Gumo. From there, he took a train to Delhi, Kalkamel, and went to Afghanistan, Peshawar. From there, he took a 
flight to Moscow. He has an idea to take help from Levy because in the Second World War, he said that this is the best opportunity to achieve our independence because England is now in trouble. There are many enemies. This is the best opportunity. We have to take this opportunity. So he went to Moscow to seek help from Lenin. And then he went to Berlin to seek help from Nazi Hitler. And Netanyahu was strongly criticized because he took help from Hitler. But Netanyahu's argument was, the enemy is the enemy is my friend. So Hitler was the enemy to the Britishers. So he's our friend. And Hitler allowed him to use the Berlin radio. And from Berlin radio, Netaji declared the total war against the Britishers. And he decided to go to eastern part of India, where was the growing discontent against the Britishers during the Second World War. And Japan was against the Britishers. He decided to take help from Japan. And with the submarine from Berlin, he started his journey towards Tokyo, and he took two and a half months in submarine. And the midway, he changed his submarine from German submarine to Japanese submarine. So you can imagine what a person he was, what a courageous man he was. At the time, the British were the superpower majorly. But Netaji declared war against, total war against Britishers. He reached in Tokyo in two and a half months. And he was accepted by Dojo, the Prime Minister of Japan at the time, and Raj Bihari Bosch, another great nationalist leader who already formed an Indian army called Indian National Army with the help of the prisoners of war captured by Japan who were working for Britishers, kept in jail in Tokyo. They were all released to join with Indian National Army and also Indian soldiers, he recruited soldiers, and he formed the Indian National Army. And he was proceeding to attack Britishers in India. He reached up to Singapore, and he declared free India. He declared independence in Singapore. From there, he's proceeding towards the eastern part of India. He reached up to Imphal. What a man he was. He had to walk miles after miles on foot without water, without food, along with the soldiers to attack Britishers in India. But unfortunately, there was a tactical mistake by Japan. They bombed Pearl Harbor in Hawaii Island in the shipyard of US on retaliation. US bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, two cities in Japan in 1945. After that bombing in Japan, Japan had to surrender. It was totally shattered. Japan was totally shattered and he had to, that the Second World War came to an end. But suddenly in 1945, the greatest freedom fighter, the great patriot, Netaji Shwar Chandra Bhutsh, disappeared. Still, it is a mystery how Netaji died or how, if he is alive, where he has been. There is no clue. It has now 125 years had he been alive. So Netaji also a human being. There is no possibility that he is alive. But India ultimately achieved India's independence in 1947. It is a great pity we lost Netaji in 1945, for which he sacrificed everything his everything his life had he been the ICS officer. He could have lived a lavish life. He born in a very rich family. And he was qualified ICS, but he sacrificed everything. Only dream of him was to see India's independence. He felt unless India being free from the British rule, India cannot be prospered. At the time in India, hardly 15% of Indian have the knowledge to read and write. They were ignoring. The British have made Indian people ignorant. Hardly 1% of the resources they're earning from India they spent for education, which is much less than what is spent in 
one city in the United States, in Washington City, less than for the whole nation, they spend so little money to make Indian educated. If for the health, at the time in Indian, the average lifespan was 17 years. But after independence, in, we have spent 75 years as independent nation. Now, average life expectancy of Indian life is 75 years. So the great institutions like IIT, IIM, all these are built after India got, India achieved independence. They did nothing for Indian. So British people sometimes say that they make Indian, that they're Indian, they're lucky that they were in under British. No, India is utterly distressed because India had to spend 190 years. So we must not forget the great sacrifice for our freedom fighters in the different field who wanted to see India independent nation, democratic Indian nation. So we must not forget the sacrifice of the great people who sacrificed for our country. Now, in the concluding, I request Malini to speak something more. A few more revolutionaries A few more revolutionaries must also be named. Uh, can you please turn off the mic there, Baba? Yes. Can you please turn off the mic? It's echoing here. Yes. No. Okay. Okay. So I'll just continue talking about some more revolutionaries from Bengal. Lala Lajpat Rai, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, and Bipin Chandropal, the famous trio popularly known as Lal Bal Pal, were advocates of Swadeshi movement. Amongst them, Bipin Chandropal from Bengal was called the father of revolutionary thoughts in India. He became a major leader of the Indian National Congress. Sri Aurobindo Ghosh and Pal were recognized as the chief components of new national movement revolving around the ideas of Purna Swaraj, Swadeshi, national education. 19th in Calcutta, the administration, the capital of British rule in India was buzzing with activity as usual. Three young bravehearts decided to take matters into their own hands. The three comrades, Binoy, Badol, and Dinesh, decided to kill N.S. Simpson, the IG prison of Calcutta, as well as other Britishers. This was to strike terror into the heart of the Raj's official circle. This was to be an attack on the writer's building, the secretariat right in the heart of the city. Although British managed to overpower the trio, the man refused to surrender. Badul Gupta immediately ingested potassium cyanide, while Binoy and Dinesh shot themselves point blank with their firearms. This is a picture of the writer's building in Kolkata, and just across the building, the statue of the three brave hearts still stand pointing towards where they had given their life for India's freedom. Churjo Shen was popularly called Master Da. Master means teacher and Da is a short form of Dada as we refer to the brothers in Bengal. He was from Chittagong in modern day Bangladesh. He was a school teacher by profession. That's the reason he was called Master Da. He believed in the ideology of violence as the means of ending British rule in India. Shurjo Shen led the Chittagong armory attack on April 18, 1930. He planned to capture two major British armories in Chittagong and distribute weapons to other revolutionaries who could then establish an armed unit. He and his group were successful in capturing the armories, but failed to find ammunition. 
Finally, after a long search, the British arrested Master Da. He was brutally tortured before he was hanged on January 12, 1934. He gave his life crying out the call of war, Vande Mataram. Vande Mataram, the war cry, was coined by a very eminent writer from Bengal, Bonkin Chandra Chattopadhyay. It was first mentioned in his book, Anandomot. First, it was sung by Ravindranath Tagore in a Congress conference. Later on, every extremist, every freedom fighter shouted out Vande Mataram before going out on their mission. We must never forget the sacrifice made by our freedom fighters. The time under British rule was extremely distressful. We now live in a free India and we cannot imagine what people felt back then. It was such a situation that even breathing was more painful than death. And what would people do other than revolting? We should cherish our fighters and should get inspiration from their stories of struggle in our life to make India what it was. Jai Hind. Thank you. It's been such a wonderful presentation. And uh, before I take some of the other questions that are coming on this side, uh, so one of uh, whoever wants to take this question. You know, so, uh, one of the students was trying to find out whether uh, Netaji actually came through Imphal. Something has gone wrong with Baba's connection, so he has joined me from the same place. No, no, that's fine. That's perfect. That's actually very nice to see both father-daughter together. So the question that Ganga Prasad is asking is, did Netaji come to Imphal Manipur along with the INA army in 1944? Yes, ma'am. They came from, from Singapore to the eastern part of India okay. and reached up to Imphal. And there was the debacle. Uh, so many of the soldiers were injured. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Netaji was so sensitive person, though he was the general of his INA. Mm -hmm. He was simply shed his tear for his soldiers. He was so compassionate. Then nobody knows it. Then he went to Japan for preparation, the fresh attack. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, in the, uh, most probably in Tahiku airport, there was a plane crash. But it is not sure whether he was in that uh, aircraft. After that, there was no trace of Netaji. Okay. It is still a mystery whether he died in the plane crash or he went somewhere. Nobody knows anything, no clue. Okay. okay. Ma'am, uh, if you allow me, I, I want to speak just a few words on this point. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. <laughs> Actually, uh, we had a webinar already, the Kohima War Memorial. Uh, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. When you go back to home, tell about us. So it was a webinar, wonderful webinar, and that's about uh, INA uh, of Subhash Chandra Bose and the British Indian Army. So at Kohima, there was the one of the toughest war of the uh, you know the Second World War history, where one side there was a British Indian Army and the second side INA with help of Japanese forces. Uh, in history, they believe that it was a war between uh, allies and the Axis forces. But uh, being a researcher in uh, Indian history, I can tell you, uh, I can tell my audience that it was a war between Subhash Chandra Bose he, in, uh, and his army, Ajad Hind Forge, and British Indian Army. And, it was the toughest war. In that war, you, you can imagine it was started in April and in, in June. So almost three months it, uh, uh, that war continued. And one thing is a very important. When the I, um, Japanese and the INA, they lost that battle. And the Japanese uh, commander asked the Subhash and Bose, 
you must uh, leave uh, um, from here. We are giving you the safe passage and you back to Japan. But the Subhash Chandra Bose, what he mentioned there, until or unless my sisters are here, because in Subhash Chandra Bose army, in Ajar Hind Foj army, there was a, you know, the Mahila battalion uh, was there. And uh, the name of that battalion was Maharani Lakshmi Bai battalion. And that those women who were so brave and they were not uh, ready to, uh, you know, the, um, leave the battleground. Finally, uh, the Subhash Chandra Bose stayed there until all the sisters were not left that battleground. And uh, then as uh, Manmendra Dada told that uh, from there, anyhow, uh, he um, tried to back to the Singapore and uh, what's happened, that is still a mystery. But tomorrow is the birthday of, uh, you know, the uh, Subhash Chandra Bose. And the meanwhile, our Honorable Prime Minister inaugurated inaugurated yesterday uh, or the day before yesterday at uh, India Gate, a big uh, statue of, uh, you know, the Subhash Chandra Bose. So it is honor to him. Uh, well presented, Dada. Well presented, Ma Malini. Ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ajay. In fact, for everybody joining in, Dr. Ajay is the president of the, uh, you know, the Tour Guides Federation of India and himself a huge um, resource, as I said, all our guides uh, are a wealth of information. Now, talking of the Kohima Ward Cemetery, in fact, I, uh, I'm afraid we totally forgot we should have shown the students today all the fun that the children had when they went with us to Kohima in the end of November. But next time, we will definitely remember to show you a beautiful presentation that was made by the students themselves out of that program. And they went to the Kohima War Cemetery, which is a memorial dedicated to soldiers of the second British division of the Allied forces who died in the Second World War at Kohima. Talking of war memorials, dear friends, I also want to share with you that in New Delhi, right in the heart of the capital, the National War Memorial has been erected. It was inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister on 25th February 2019. And for anybody who is living in Delhi or is traveling to Delhi or can choose to travel to Delhi, it's a must go to place. The National War Memorial is a, a memorial which is dedicated to all the martyrs who have laid down their life from 1947 when India became independent and currently on the bricks that are there in honor of these martyrs, there are 26,000, almost 400. It's, I think the exact number is 338 or 340. I'm not so sure uh, on the exact number right now, but approximately 26,400 names of the martyrs of the three arms of the forces, the army, the Navy and the Air Force are etched over there. What is also very special about the National War Memorial is that every single day at about 5.15, 5.30, depending on the sundown time, there is a next of kin ceremony that happens over there. Of all these soldiers who have laid down their life, one family member, the closest, some mostly, in fact, the ceremonies that I have attended are mostly the wives of the uh, martyred soldiers who come over and a citation is read in the honor of the martyred soldier. And then the family member goes and lays a wreath at the Jyoti. And then the beating retreat ceremony for the day happens. It's a very solemn ceremony. It's a beautiful war memorial. It not only brings you to light the sacrifice, but it also, I think, works as a great reminder that how much it takes to get that freedom and independence and how much it takes to then keep it. Someone on the side has asked a question that when will we start getting referred to as a developed country? If we look at where we were and where the British left us to where we are and how much progress in the last few years India has made today, 140 plus airports in the country, second largest highways after the USA today, sixth best country today for medical tourism the you know so i can the list can just go on and on we all have to work together and that's why when dr pankaj and i met casually in fact over a dinner 
and how this whole idea came and where we see the strength of this program is all of you students. It's your India. It's your India which you have to build. When you ask that question, you all have to work for it to make it into that developed country. For tourism, when we are asked what is our vision, yes, that is our vision. We have to be number one country. Currently, in the last six years, we have moved from rank 65th to 34th in 2019, just before COVID. All of you have to join hands to make it the number one country, not only in tourism, but in everything else also. That is actually the thought, the philosophy behind these programs. And I will, in fact, request at this point to Dr. Pankaj also to you know, echo her sentiments about where we see this journey going. And then I'll tell you a little more about the quiz and how you should answer it to make sure that you are part of our trip when we go next time. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Rabindraji. Very well said. Like we always boast of the demographic dividend we have. Demographic dividend means because we are the youngest nation in the world. We our average age is only 29 years. And you can compare it well with the say other countries in China, it is 37, Japan 45, Europe 37. So everybody is much, much older than us. So we are the youngest nation in the world and the youngest nation means we have a lot of advantage, which we call as demographic advantage. So all the students, somebody said that, why don't you speak in Hindi? So I, I, I'll, I'll continue in Hindi. So जो हमारे युवा बच्चे हैं जो स्टूडेंट्स हैं जो आज हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं इस पे आपके कंधों पे ही है कि भारत आगे कैसे बढ़ेगा किस डायरेक्शन में बढ़ेगा कितना बढ़ेगा तो ये हमसे नहीं पूछना चाहिए हमें आपसे पूछना चाहिए कि इंडिया को आगे कहां तक ले जाओगे क्योंकि जिम्मेवारी आपकी है और हम लोगों ने जितना कुछ कर सकते थे हमारी जनरेशन ने हमने किया आगे भी करेंगे हमारे देश में चाहे हमारे पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम है गवर्नेंस सिस्टम है हमारा एजुकेशन सिस्टम है सभी लोग अपनी अपनी तरफ से पूरी कोशिश कर रहे हैं और आप सबकी भी जिम्मेवारी है कि पूरी कोशिश करें कि भारत को एक डेवलप्ड नेशन भारत को नंबर वन हम कहते हैं ना अभी हम फाइव फाइव ट्रिलियन इकोनॉमी की तरफ बढ़ रहे हैं पर आने वाले समय में नंबर वन और नंबर टू देश हमारे देश को बनना है और जिम्मेवारी हमारे युवाओं पे है क्योंकि यू आर अवर फ्यूचर आपके बिना हम अपने भविष्य की कल्पना ही नहीं कर सकते तो यू आर अवर फ्यूचर यू आर दन विल टेक इंडिया टू दिस आई मीन वेन वी वर यंग इंडिया बहुत पीछे था धीरे धीरे आगे बढ़ा अब और आगे बढ़ेगा बाय द टाइम विल बी ऑलमोस्ट वेरी वेरी ओल्ड तो विल सी ए न्यू इंडिया हमारे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने भी एक नए देश के नए इंडिया की न्यू इंडिया की कल्पना की है तो वो न्यू इंडिया कैसे बनेगा आपसे बनेगा तो इसलिए ये बहुत जरूरी है कि आप सब लोग एक नए इंडिया की तरफ बढ़े और अपने देश को बढ़ाए इसके साथ ही मैं रुपिंदर जी का एक बार फिर से धन्यवाद करती हूँ कि ये प्रोग्राम मुझे मुझे ये प्रोग्राम खुद को बहुत अच्छा लगता है क्योंकि मेरे लिए बहुत बड़ा लर्निंग एक्सपीरियंस होता है आज जब मालिनी मालिनी जी और नाथ जी जब ये सारा सुना रहे थे तो मेरे लिए बहुत सारी चीजें नई नई थी जो मुझे भी नहीं पता थी तो हर एक मतलब हर उम्र में हम सीख ही सकते हैं सीखते रहते हैं वी आर ऑलवेज ए स्टूडेंट दे फॉर इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि हमें सीखना चाहिए और अच्छी बातें सीखनी चाहिए अच्छे प्रोग्राम्स देखने चाहिए और इससे हमारे खुद का मतलब दिमाग का विकास होगा हम लोग आगे बढ़ने के बारे में सोचेंगे आगे अपने आसपास वालों को आगे बढ़ने के लिए प्रेरित कर सकेंगे तो थैंक यू नाग जी एंड थैंक यू मालिनी जी फॉर ए वंडरफुल प्रोग्राम यू डिड इट वेरी वेल एंड इट वॉज रियली इंटरेस्टिंग कैसे खुदी राम बोस जी को फांसी हुई कैसे वो चल के गए मतलब एवरीथिंग वॉज सो इंटरेस्टिंग थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर शेयरिंग इट विद ऑल ऑफ अस टूडे थैंक यू बिल्कुल वेल सेट डॉक्टर पंकज इन फैक्ट खुदी राम की कहानी सुनकर एक्चुअली इंसान के रोंगटे खड़े होते हैं 18 साल की इतनी कोमल आयु यू नो जब अभी हम सोच भी नहीं रहे होते इन चीजों के बारे में और आप ये देखें कि आज हम इसको पीछे की हिस्ट्री के रूप में पढ़ते हैं तो हमें पता है कि हमें उन्नीस में आजादी मिली जिस दिन वो ये त्याग दे रहे थे अपने जीवन का उन्हें तो नहीं पता था कोई तारीख तो नियुक्त नहीं थी उन्हें ये आइडिया भी नहीं था कि आगे चल के कब उनको एक्चुअली वो रिजल्ट मिलेगा जहां के वो अपने देश को कहीं दूर से आसमान से देखेंगे क्योंकि वो तो होंगे ही नहीं तो कितना ज्यादा जज्बा चाहिए एक अनोनिमस अटेंडी है आपका नाम नहीं आ रहा है बच्चे अः वतन पर जो फिदा होगा अमर वो नौजवान होगा कितना सुंदर सेंटिमेंट किसी ने लिखा है I can't get your name because you're coming by anonymous attendee. But yes, I think ये सारी चीजें जो पंकज जी ने कहा, why we need to revisit these things is precisely for the reason that 
एवरी डे लिविंग में कई दफे हम भूल जाते हैं बहुत सी चीजें और इन्होंने और मैंने तो शायद पढ़ी भी होंगी स्कूल में फिर भी हम भूल जाते हैं रोजमर्रा के जीवन में हम इतने इन्वॉल्व हो जाते हैं और बहुत सी चीजों का तो पता ही नहीं है समबरी एज आस्ट अबाउट वेमेन तो डियर पार्टिसिपेंट्स एज यू नो मानबेंद्र दादा सेड इन द बिगिनिंग वन आर सेशन कैन नॉट डू जस्टिस दैट इज द इनक्रेडिबल इंडिया लेट मी शेयर विद ऑल ऑफ यू दैट फ्रॉम दी हेड क्वार्टर्स we are bringing this one is our 116th webinar in part of dekho apna desh series and every single time for me personally it's a humbling experience that there is so much in my beautiful country so there is no end to this journey and aap sabko bhi meri request ye hogi ki aap na sirf ye wala karyakram jo hum aiu ke ye specially craft karte hain na sirf isko dekhe but ministry of tourism ki website par all of you are welcome to visit and see all these beautiful uh, you know sessions brought to you by incredible indians we just play the role of the sutradhar we just bring incredible <laughs> indians together and so do go and visit on ministry of tourism's website the links under dekho apna desh you'll find 115 and after a few hours it will become 116th recorded webinar which will travel you across the country so do visit that and every time that you will see the webinar you will get a certificate someone asked me what will we do with the certificate i'm not going to tell you all the secrets in one day na so today you take the questions after this uh, session 25 questions and then after you answer the question you are all sent a certificate and e certificate and after a few days when omicron is a little uh, behind us we will again be taking you all on a physical trip there will be a lottery system out of which the best winners the fastest answer based winners etc etc the number of parameters that are used to pick the right uh, winners but keep answering keep joining keep spreading the word for incredible india and before i am going to end i'm definitely going to request malini and dada to say a few words once again and then we'll sign off and we'll tell you where we are taking you next time malini yes okay so, uh, so yes. i will uh, tell something the time entered uh, the british rule was extremely grateful we are free india we are now in free india and cannot okay okay so now we are independent india now greatest burden to take our country forward so i can tell you one thing very important out of every 3 trained person in the world now one is indian be he is an engineer maybe a doctor a lawyer a technician that means a trained person up every three person in the world one is indian and indian democracy perhaps the most successful democracy in the world now and india is called the unity in diversity it is truly this world it is like a continent there are so many languages so many different food have it dresses no other country in the world having so many languages the official language i think in india is 19 but more than 700 languages so it is truly a country unity in diversity so before say before say in the, during the time of battle of plassey or at the time we never thought about a nation india is a nation we th thought about our state our province or our village but now we think we are indian we never think that we are from this province or this state we always think we are indian that is the greatest achievement for the indian so once again i repeat that no other country can claim the unity in diversity what india can claim as regards tourism india is approaching to be the number one destination in the world in the tourist map at the time of india's independence there was nothing in the indian constitution about tourism no ministry nothing but now it is second most important industry in our country tourism it is next to engineering industry because everything now we are see it is manufactured in some industry 
but second most important industry now tourism and it is called smokeless industry there is no chance of pollution from this industry and this industry only creates world peace and now it is very easy to visit one country to another country because of tremendous development in transport and communication and transfer of knowledge information it is so easy so we hope and definitely we we can claim the india will be number one destination for tourism in near future so thank you very much once again madam thank you all of you to give us the platform to express our ideas that we love india and long live india thank you very much thank you radha malini so all jo bacche dekh rahe hai they were saying to say something in hindi to sare bachcho ko yahi hai ki hamara jo country hai ye bahut hi behtareen country hai aur hum sabko milke usko aur behtareen banana hai ये सिर्फ गवर्नमेंट या इसको करना है उसको करना है ये नहीं करके खुद को करना है ये सोच के हमको आगे बढ़ना है क्योंकि ये हमारा देश है इट्स अ ग्रेट कंट्री थैंक यू मालिनी संतोष देव आप हिस्सा थे आईटीएम 2021 के हमारे साथ थे नागालैंड में एंड ही इज मेंशनिंग अबाउट द सेशन बीइंग वंडरफुल थैंक यू आई विश आई कुड ब्रिंग सम ऑफ यू ऑनलाइन राइट नाउ एंड यू नो हियर योर कमेंट्स बट वी विल ट्राई एंड डू दैट नेक्स्ट टाइम वी विल स्पेशली कीप 10 15 मिनट्स for our students to share their experiences with everyone else but for now all of you are wondering about the quiz the quiz has come online koi login nahi kar pa raha hai to bilkul ghabraiye mat the quiz will be open till 10 pm in the night because there is suddenly a lot of rush so sometimes you don't get it but keep keep logging in you'll surely get it that's number 1 the minute you finish answering the quiz the certificate automatically gets generated you can just download it on the phone through my gov it comes through so not to worry on that and for the winners who will actually go for physical program with us later we'll keep updating uh, through uh, dr pankaj also and on our own handles also as to how and when will the physical events actually start for now everybody just has to keep safe keep wearing your masks keep doing your social distancing next week if all of you have gotten inspired to watch uh, they kopna desh next week 11 am saturday we'll be taking you to southern part of our country to munnar so come with us we're going to take you to some beautiful green areas of munnar and maybe we'll have some coffee over there or maybe we'll have some tea over there or maybe we'll just pick some cardamom i don't know what we'll do but we definitely want you to join us in munnar at 11 am next saturday in the meantime keep safe keep healthy take the next 6 hours to answer all the questions big round of thanks to the tour guide federation of india to malini to dada to ajay ji to pankaj ji for bringing everything together to nigd for enabling it to my gov to making sure that everybody gets this program to my own team that works tirelessly the children from the social media team my team in the domestic offices that has been working tirelessly over the last few months and most importantly to all of you students please spread the word of incredible india and wish you all a very happy republic day let's work to make the country stronger better and the number one country in every sense in the world jai hind jai hind jai hind